Good morning, and thank you for joining me. Uh, this morning, the, the Green Party of Canada brings a follow-up to a documentary that was aired weekend before uh, last on Radio Canada and CBC National. And that documentary told us about a situation that occurred in the tsunami relief efforts. It was a troubling story that focused on the problem that occurred where workers were brought in by contractors by the Canadian Red Cross and other Red Cross agencies in the humanitarian relief effort for Aceh province. We all remember the devastation of the tsunami. We remember the extraordinary generosity of Canadians in donating uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in the circumstances to assist the devastation that occurred in, in Aceh province and throughout the areas struck by the tsunami through Bangladesh and other countries. What came to light through the work of a former Red Cross employee was that some of the workers were inadequately paid, not paid, not fed, brought 2,000 kilometers from their home on the promise of good job conditions that simply didn't exist when they got there. I've now met with the Red Cross, and the Red Cross says that the stories and the allegations in the Radio Canada documentary are unfounded. Uh, they firmly believe that when problems arose, and they admit that problems arose, that they've been all dealt with by now. I think there's questions here that need answers. And in order to do that, I think we need to have uh, some understanding of what the potential is, that the interviews that we saw in the Radio Canada documentary are accurate, that there are in fact workers who are still awaiting assistance. At a larger policy level, the Green Party would like to know what CETA intends to do to ensure adequate monitoring of, pro of projects, to examine the issue of outsourcing labor, to examine the issue of contractors. And I think the experience at Aceh uh, would suggest that a supplier code of conduct in the hands of an unethical contractor isn't really sufficient to ensure that Canadian values are protected in the work that takes place overseas. Uh, C'est un, un question avec uh, les concerns sérieux. Nous avons les, les inquiétudes sérieuses aux conséquences de l'histoire et le documentaire de Radio-Canada qui ont montré les problèmes sérieux avec les travailleurs qui se ne paient pas, uh, n'avaient pas l'occasion pour uh, la réunification avec leur famille. En réalité, il y a une histoire où il y a les, les nouvelles victimes aux causes de le, uh, les efforts au secours. And I will just close my section of the press conference before turning it to Virgil Granfield, who has come in at his own expense to further discuss the issues that came to light in the Radio Canada documentary and say that from the Green Party's point of view, we don't think that the answers are all in. We think there's more work to be done to ensure that every worker in a Canadian project received adequate compensation for their efforts. And I'll turn it to Virgil Granfield. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth, and to the Green Party of Canada for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of not only hundreds of Canadian Red Cross victims of human trafficking and tsunami operations, but also at least 50,000 other victims from other UN Red Cross and NGO projects in the Aceh reconstruction. What I experienced and discovered when I first went to Aceh, uh, sorry, when I went to Aceh for the second time uh, after my one-year mission there in 2005-2006, what I experienced when I arrived in 2007 uh, was heartbreaking for me as a Red Cross delegate and also as a Canadian. I was heartbroken to find that we had thousands of second-class citizens working on our projects and that at least hundreds of those persons were not being paid, they weren't eating, they were desperate and trying to escape. Uh, what I experienced and witnessed, what other Red Cross employees saw, what the beneficiaries themselves in Canadian Red Cross villages uh, and the workers, victims themselves have reported to Radio Canada uh, and other persons uh, shows us that there are far more victims of this tragedy than Canadian Red Cross is admitting to the Canadian people and to itself. This is uh, a tragedy uh, for the Canadian Red Cross, for those workers and for Canadians. And it definitely shows that there's unfinished business for us to do in Indonesia and here in Canada. 
Uh, I was a Canadian Red Cross, uh, I became a Canadian Red Cross delegate in 2002. Uh, I've worked for the Canadian Red Cross and the International Red Cross in different missions uh, and different capacities. Uh, until 2008 when I resigned as a delegate, delegate because it took me six months to get Canadian Red Cross to begin to act appropriately on this issue, to address this issue. Uh, when I first brought it up, the reaction was, uh, was not favorable. The first uh, in investigation Canadian Red Cross did involved only uh, a survey of the opinions of the actual agents or traffickers themselves. No interviews were done with workers or employees like myself. Even so, there were at least 150 workers in one village that were determined to have been victims of human trafficking. Those persons were never compensated. Uh, in the meantime, over the next six months, there was a malaria epidemic which grew in the Red Cross compounds. This was not answered in those first months that I was uh, lobbying for the workers and also environmental health officers. Finally, after, my, after six months, the uh, Red Cross did have Ernst & Young, the same company that did the due diligence on the contractors, had them return to do a so-called investigation of the situation. That investigation included the Nike form of audits, which has workers in the same room with the agents who trafficked them. Uh, we still haven't received the report from Canadian Red Cross. I think that's an insult to the Canadian people. Uh, I returned in, to Indonesia in July of 2009 with the intention of finding the victims, former victims of Canadian Red Cross projects that I was aware of and to look for others. I traveled to the island of Java uh, with the name of one victim and the name of his district. Uh, no address, and uh, in two weeks I was able to locate him and other Canadian Red Cross victims. I then uh, organized uh, hu human rights activists in Indonesia for six months. We looked for other victims of human trafficking and tsunami projects. We found 1,000 victims, uh, over 1,000 victims, and, div and discovered a pattern which showed us that at least 50,000 men were trafficked on, on tsunami projects in Indonesia, in Aceh. Uh, my intention was to have Canadian Red Cross compensate all past victims, but when I returned to Aceh and the, the area in question with the Radio Canada investigation in January of 2010, what we discovered is that not only were there the victims from before the Ernst & Young report, but that the problem continued day after day, month after month, until the termination of the Canadian Red Cross project in Aceh in June of 2009. This was told to us by persons at every door knocked on in every village that we went to in Canadian Red Cross projects. Also, the, Red Cross, the, the Radio Canada team, with the help of a human rights group, found a group of Canadian Red Cross worker victims from after the Ernst & Young report. Uh, they were among uh, 32 victims from one incident who were victims of human trafficking on, ca trafficking on Canadian Red Cross projects and never paid. In our investigation, we found 20 other partially partial victims and unconfirmed 28 other victims. And this was only in the surveys that we were able to do in four out of 82 districts in Java. There are 78 other districts to search. There are definitely hundreds of Canadian Red Cross victims still deserving of justice in Indonesia. Et en seulement pour, uh, pour conclusion, le Parti vert du Canada réclame une meilleure surveillance de l'aide en cas de catastrophe et de l'aide aux sinistrés et exige que l'ACTI retrouve et dédommage toutes les victimes de traite humaine affiliées à des projets canadiens en lien avec le tsunami survenu en Indonésie. Uh, we believe that there is uh, a, uh, an issue here that requires answers. And again, having just met with the Red Cross and they tell me every issue that was ever raised was satisfactorily resolved. And then I hear uh, Virgil Granfield's eyewitness account of people who've never been compensated. Uh, it's hard to, to leave alone something where there may be victims of injustice still needing our help as Canadians. 
It's also the case that we, uh, we know that the Red Cross has tried in its efforts and its own mind to resolve all the issues. This is something that's going to require more than a Radio Canada documentary. We need to get to the bottom of this. And with that, I'd open it up for questions.